Hi, I'm Kristen. Happy New Year. Um, this is Scrap Fabric Love. If you are new to the channel, I like to make lots of quilts from scrap fabric, whether that's reclaimed clothes like this one, denim and old shirts and stuff, or kind of scrounging around and buying other quilters scrap fabric or remnants from quilt shops or just any other scraps I get my hand on, to be honest. So if you're new to the channel, uh, this is my quilts and review for 2023. I usually like to do it kind of before Christmas as a nice wrap up to the year, but did I do it this year? No, <laughs> so life got in the way. So this is my first video of 2024 and I'm gonna review 2023 and show you all the quilts I made last year. So if you are new to the channel, you'll see a bit of what it's about and see if you wanna hang around. And if you are a regular subscriber, you might get reminded of a project that you wanted to do and you can go back and find the tutorial video. If there is a video linked to the quilt, it'll be in the video description box below. So you just click on the show more underneath the title and it all drops down and you get all the links. So if you're looking for that, that's where to find them. So I hope you enjoy the quilts and I'll see you at the end. My first quilt finish of 2023 was part of the Scrap Buster Quilt Along that I ran on my channel in January last year. So it was a series of four videos and you could use crumb blocks, you could use two and a half inch squares. There was a bunch of variations, but it was meant to be a quick and easy Scrap Buster quilt. So I really had fun making that and seeing all the versions that you guys made. If you didn't see that series and you wanna follow along, videos are all still there and you'll find the link in the description. I also did a really random uh, quilt here using some of the test blocks for that quilt along. So you can see those kind of um, uh, Swiss cross blocks on the side. And then I had some leftover, I don't know, I'd been playing with kind of uh, red and white strips and half square triangles and I had a bunch of those. And so I decided to make this diamond thing in the middle and it all just became a big kind of play really with some denim background. I did put it on the long arm, got a little bit stretched. So um, it's not, I'm not like the most proud of this quilt, but it's got a few moments in it that I like. My favorite is this red patch where, which I think was probably to cover some sort of a pucker when I put it on the long arm. And then I don't know why I decided to do all of those um, circling around the edges, but I really like how that looked. So it kind of just gave me an idea for something I might want to use somewhere else. Um, right now, this is a kind of picnic quilt, a sort of car quilt, so very much a utility one. Next is one I made for my friend for her birthday. It was using the colors that she was putting in her new living room. She sent me a kind of inspiration photo, and I made a whole bunch of kind of improv pieces, I guess, out of um, scraps that I had in those colors and then cut them into Drunkard's Path using my AccuQuilt. Uh, there's a whole video about how I made this quilt uh, and I really enjoyed how it came out. I really like this quilt, I'm proud of it, even though the colors are absolutely not ones that I normally choose. So it was kind of nice to have that prompt uh, and I really, really enjoyed making this one. Next, I seem to be stuck on making quilts in colors that I don't normally go for. So this time it was pastels. And this quilt is one, there's another video about it as well. Um, it's I called it Quilt As You Go on the Long Arm. Uh, I know that's kind of controversial, but <laughs> because it wasn't a joining Quilt As You Go, it was piecing as you go kind of thing. But basically there's no pattern, no plan. Uh, took a bunch of strips in all these colors and kind of went for it. Added a bunch of applique, played with a bunch of different quilting designs. Uh, and I was pleased actually with how it turned out. I, I, you know, I thought it was going to be too twee because the colors just are not really me, but I really like this quilt and this one's on my bed actually. And what I really like about it most is in use is the texture because I did all the different kind of quilting. So some areas are not quilted a lot and some have a kind of a stipple or something like that. And so it's just a really nice tactile quilt. So that kind of surprised me. Uh, and I would love to do something else like this, but in colors that are more me, I think. This one I can't take credit for, but I did do an assist. It was my uh, now five-year-old, then four-year-old's first ever quilt. So he chose all of the bits of fabric and decided where they were gonna go. 
and he helped with the piecing and I helped to finish it off for him a little bit. It's very rough and ready and I had to hold myself back from trying to help him to um, maybe change it a bit uh, to make it less busy, but he loves it. So um, I think it's great too. Next was the My Scrappy Heart Quilt. This is my own foundation paper piece pattern. It's in my Etsy shop. Uh, and I designed it as a way to either stretch some sentimental fabric like old shirts like in this one to make memory quilts maybe for mem multiple people or memory cushions or whatever and uh, or to use your own scraps to kind of make a block for every quilt that you make for somebody else so you can kind of remember them and make a quilt for yourself that's kind of the idea this one was made with old shirts old jeans and a wool blanket as the batting so it's very heavy and thick and there were places where I had to do a little bit of stitch mending where the seam popped and stuff um, but I kind of like those moments in it even though those little mending bits are not exactly in the pattern. Next I finished two quilts pretty much at the same time as part of the scrap buster quilt along so it was the second quilt along I did this last year um, which a bunch of you followed along with. There was a row quilt uh, layout and then there was like a more random layout so uh, I made those two at the same time my favorite is probably the sort of pride colors one which I made in memory of my father uh, I also like the navy and pink one but I think the the other one's probably my favorite and if you want to see other versions of this quilt you can look at my youtube shorts where I've put up some of the images that some of you guys sent me of your finished uh, quilts using the same pattern and if you want to make this quilt, either version, uh, you can still, so you, if you go and watch the videos, there's a link in the description and all of the free downloads and things are still there to use. Next in 2023, I finished this one. It's called Overgrown. It's um, kind of an art quilt. It hangs on the wall. And I made it specifically for the sustainable quilts category in the Festival of Quilts this year. So the applique on it is like from old sheets and shirts and things like that. And the background is old jeans and denim. Uh, and it's the first time I've ever entered a quilt show and it got shortlisted in the category. Uh, so I was happy about that. And I had a really good time at the quilt show. And I think I'll probably enter more, even though previously I have probably said I'm not the sort of quilter who would ever do that. Um, it kind of demystified it for me. So I've got videos about both making this quilt and about my experience at the quilt show if you want to check those ones out. Total change of tack. The next quilt I finished in 2023 was a Missouri Star Quilt Company version of A Carpenter's Star. Uh, and I'd made the quilt top with like a layer cake, which is not something I normally do. And I felt like the colors were all too muted. And I ended up playing with couching for the first time to try and kind of give it a bit more definition. And I also used a new way to label quilts on the binding for this quilt as well which I really like and is what I'm using uh pretty much all the time now so there's a video about me doing the, the couching uh on this quilt and then there's another video about the labels as well which I will link to in the description okay so now we're up to August which is actually when I finished my quiltmas quilt which some of you may have seen the video for back in December um, you guys had rules for entering to win and we had rules for what we had to get our quilts finished in order to get the videos up in time. So this quilt was done in August, but it wasn't given to the recipient, Barbara, until December. And she said I could use this photo of her holding the quilt. She says she's really happy with it, which of course makes me pleased. Um, and I did really like making this quilt as well. Next up was another totally random project commissioned by my youngest son. Is it a quilt? Is it just a comforter with some quilting? I don't know. Uh, he wanted pink. He wanted a pink comforter. It's his favorite color. Uh, so I used a duvet that we already had where, you know, the cover keeps falling off. It's really annoying. <laughs> and he picked out a bunch of pink fabric from my stash. He picked out some shapes he wanted from my AccuQuilt dies. And he decided where everything went. And we added some couching as well because he liked the pink yarn that I had left over from the Carpenter Star one. Um, so we ended up with pink Christmas trees, pink snowflakes. It's totally crazy, but he loves it. And that's all that matters. Next up was my double orange peel quilt, which I had a lot of fun making. So it's quilting cotton, uh, crumb blocks, and old jeans, my favorite. 
Uh, and there's a video about making the block and also about how I used a quote as you go technique to join the whole thing together. But I have to do a full disclosure moment here for those of you who followed that series of uh, two videos. Uh, in making the block for this, I kind of threw caution to the wind and didn't use Fusible. And I probably should have. <laughs> some of you will have just ignored me and used it anyway, which is great. Um, and for some of you, you might not have the same problem I have. But I used a straight stitch, raw edge applique, no Fusible. And then we had a spillage moment over Christmas and this had to go through the wash and then it was a hectic day. So it kept having to go through the spin cycle maybe like three times <laughs> before it uh, eventually got dried. And so some of the some of the stitches have popped. So I'll show you, this is the photo. Uh, so I'm gonna have to do a little repair work. I'm not heartbroken about it. I think it just adds some character to the quilt, but I know some people would be. So I just wanted to make sure that you knew that this was a bit experimental and there is a risk to not using fusible when you're doing a kind of a raw edge applique like this. So uh, for, forewarned is forearmed. This is a mini quilt that I made as part of a swap uh, part of the UK Quilters Guild. There's a little um, mini mini quilt swap that happens every year. I've not done it before, but I did it this year. So I got somebody else's quilt back in return and I sent them this one. There's not a video about this mini quilt specifically, but the uh, foundation paper piece hexagon blocks that are in the middle. So it's kind of quilt and gotten and, and old jeans, <laughs> obviously my favorite combination, but that block is uh, my foundation paper piece pattern and it's part of a wider quilt uh, pattern, which I'm probably gonna put out uh, this year if I get my act together. So if you if you like that, uh, you should be seeing it in a bit. I'm not, I'm not committing to a specific month, but anyway, it might come out at some point. This quilt was my low volume crumb quilt, the sort of blocks or chunks of which were made using low volume scraps over a couple of years. And I finally finished it in 2023, which I was very pleased with. And I think it turned out pretty well. Uh, there's a whole other video about it uh, if you wanna see that one. And that one I think was in October and surprisingly, for me, looking back, I didn't make any other, finish any other quilts before the end of the year since then. Uh, so here are some pictures of the makeshift Halloween costumes that my kids had me make. The youngest wanted to be Elsa. Oldest wanted to be a very obscure Pokemon called Infernape, <laughs> which is what he is. If you don't know what it is, it'll just look random. But anyway, uh, so yeah. So after that, I was just making lots of little projects for folk for Christmas and gifts and things, some of which have videos, some don't. So there's no other quilts for 2023. That's a wrap. Obviously making this video is a nice little review for myself and a little keepsake that I can go back to, but I hope you enjoyed just some quilting eye candy as well and maybe got an idea for a project. That would be ideal. So uh, if you like this video and you like quilts like that, then, and you haven't already subscribed, then please do subscribe, uh, hit the bell for notifications, leave me a comment, let me know what you thought, and I hope to see you next time. My next video is gonna be all about how to prioritize my next quilt project. So I might be asking you for some help, but I'm hoping it will also help you prioritize maybe your next project too. So I hope to see you then, bye.